All right, so there's one more structure that is super powerful, really cool, and that's something called iteration. We can think of iteration as a process that happens in a repeated way. Maybe something changes, but um, we can use it to count through a list. We can use it to draw a grid on the screen. And iteration is really one of these fundamental ideas of computer programming that we're gonna use all the time. And your assignment this week is leveraging that to think about what kinds of visuals can you use, can you create using iteration in, in computer programming. So I know we've done a lot of examples that just are printing text to the console, and we're gonna do a little bit more of that, and then we're gonna make some drawings with this. Um, there are two main forms of iterative structures in computer programming. There are other ones, but there's one called a while loop, oops, and one called a for loop. And um, the while loop is kind of the older form, uh, for loop, but it's a little easier to understand. For loop is more concise and a little more contemporary, but I think it helps to see while loop first. So let's go ahead. I'm going to make some space here in the setup. And let's say I want to count from 10 to 0. Now you could just do console.log 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, all the way down. What if you want to count 100 or 1,000 or a million? That's not going to work super well. So for our loop, it has some basic structures. First, an initial value. In this case, it's a variable called count that's equal to 10. And then we can say while, and we're going to run until a conditional is met. If you need a refresher on conditionals, you can go back to the last video where we talked about this in depth. But I can say while count is greater than or equal to 0, because we want it to go all the way down to 0 then we're going to have it do something. So I can say console.log count. Now, if I was to run this, something really bad would happen. Um, can you guess what that would be? Well, if we're starting at 10 and the while loop goes until count is less than zero, so long as it's greater than or equal to zero, count never changes, we get stuck in this loop forever. This happens, it sucks. And in fact, I just recorded this whole video and <laughs> tried running it to show you what happens and it crashed Chrome and I had to start all over. It was horrible. So I'm not going to show you that. You can try it if you want, um, but we need to do one more thing, which is change count. And in this case, subtract one. Now, take a quick look, make sure everything's cool. If I run this, we should see it print 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 which is exactly what we want. That's awesome. Um, think about how would we change this to go from 10 to one? If you wanna pause it and try it, that'd be cool. Um, there's a couple ways I can think about. One would be to say, while count is greater than zero. So it's gonna run until count is no longer greater than zero and zero is not greater than zero, it's equal to zero. So that works. We could also say greater than or equal to one. Both those work the same way. And this is a great example where in programming, there might be more than one way to do the same thing. Um, you could argue about which one is better, but um, they both kind of work the same way. One more thing that we can change here, and you're going to see really commonly, if uh, this makes perfect sense, but there's a shorter way that we can write this. And we can say count minus equals one. And this is the exact same thing. It means count equals count minus one. Uh, but it's just shorter. It's a little easier to read too. It's less redundant. Um, you'll also, we'll see in a bit, count plus equals one. It's the same idea, except going up. And it can be one or three, five, whatever. Okay, so this is the while loop. You're not gonna use it a whole lot. There are times when you want it to run forever until something happens. Maybe somebody clicks on a box or something like that. Um, but mostly the while loop is not something we're gonna use a ton. Instead, the for loop is going to be a much more common structure. This one is a little more confusing. And in fact, I've found over the years, students find the for loop, making for loops to be one of the hardest things that we do in Creative Programming 1. So if this seems a little weird, that's cool. Don't stress about it. Just practice. It's going to make it easier. We have the same kinds of things. We have an initial value. We've got a conditional. And we've got an increment or update, except so we take all the elements of this while loop and we combine it into one um, statement. 
So let's say we want to count from 0 to 9 and print the results using a for loop. You can say for let i equals 0, semicolon, i is less than 10, i plus plus. And we'll talk about what these mean in a second. We should see it print. Now it's mashed together here, but it goes from 0 to 9, and then it stops. So again, if you want to pause and try to figure out what's going on here, that'd be great. But let's talk about this. So inside the for loop, we combine all the elements of the while loop into one long statement. So here we've got our initial value, we've got our conditional and our increment on separate lines. Up here in the for loop, we combine it all together in that same order. So i is a variable, uh, starts out equal to zero. We run so long as i is less than 10. And each time around the loop, we add one to i. Now we talked about what plus equals means just a second ago, plus plus is an even shorter version of that, which means add one. So plus plus is always adding one, minus minus is subtracting one. And then we print it. Um, so let's kind of like think through our heads here what's happening. First, i is equal to zero. And i is a really common um, variable name inside of a for loop. You'll see that a lot. This is a great example of a local variable. If I try to uh, oops, try to print i here, I'm getting an, going to get an error because it doesn't know anything about i. i only exists inside this loop. So the first time around, i is equal to zero. We test it. Is 0 less than 10? Yes. Print it. And then we update. Now i is equal to 1. It continues. Is that less than 10? Yes. Print it. Add 1 to it. We keep going all the way until i equals 9. 9 is less than 10. Yes, we print it. We plus plus, add 1 to it. Then i is equal to 10. Is 10 less than 10? No. And so it stops the loop and continues. So let's say we wanted to count from 1 to 10. Right now, this is going to print 1 to 9. Again, think about ways that we could change this. 1 would be less than or equals to 10. So that's going to print up to that. Or less than 11. Either way works. You know, Both are have pros and cons to them for sure. Um, let's look at one more change that we can make. Let's say we want to do what this while loop does and count from 10 to 0. Now i is going to start out as 10. And we want to go as so long as i is greater than or equal to, oops, greater than or equal to 0. Instead of plus plus, because that's going to make it go up, you can see, oh no, it's totally freaking out. Ah! <laughs> we can see that um, it's running forever, and this is not great. Um, let's see, maybe. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. That's super annoying. I actually don't know if there's any way I can stop it. Ah, uh, it's totally crashing. OK, some of you out there, I bet, are yelling at me because you know a way to make this stop. I don't have any idea. This would maybe be a reason to turn off auto refresh in your browser. Um, OK, well, we were going to make it count down. Um, but basically, you would change plus plus here to minus minus or minus equals 1, and we'd be fine. Oh, that sucks. OK, um, pause for a sec. We're going to come back, and I'm going to show you how we can use this to make some drawings. So hang on, let me reset. We'll come right back. OK, we're back. Um, that was a major, major thing. I had to force quit Chrome. It was a whole deal. Um, good lesson, I think. Uh, so I lost what I had, but that's OK. Um, also a good message that you should be saving as you go. Oh, OK, so let's say we want to draw with these loops. Um, and we can do some simple examples together. I'm going to turn off auto refresh so it doesn't happen again. Um, OK, so I've got my thing here. And let's say we want to draw some vertical lines across the screen. We could do this you know, with line 0, 0, 0 height, et cetera, et cetera. And we could draw you know, lines across. Works for a couple shapes. But as soon as we want to draw a bunch, this becomes really tedious. Instead, we can think about using a for loop. So we can say for, remember, the first thing we do is give it an initial value. 
Um, so x is zero. We're going to run until x, or so long as x is less than width. And each um, for each one, we're going to move over by 10 pixels. Then inside the for loop, we can use x to draw our lines. So I can say line x zero, that'll be the top. And then x height will draw down. Now when I run this, I get lines every 10 pixels across. This is super cool. It's really powerful because it lets me really understand what's going on here. I'm not just looking at a bunch of numbers and it makes it really easy to change. So if I want my spacing to be 11 instead of 10, all I have to do is change one number and it totally changes how it works. If I want this to be 21, really easy to change, super compact, and I think much easier to read. I'm gonna put this back to 10. Let's say we now wanna do uh, horizontal lines as well. So I could do another for loop, let y equals zero, y is less than height, y plus equals 10. And then again, I can do a line, zero y with y. And then we get a grid, super cool. Um, so you can see kind of the power of doing this. Um, this right here saves us 80 lines of code <clears throat> drawing on the screen, which is really great. Um, and again, you know, much easier to read, much easier to update and that kind of thing. Um, so uh, we're going to dive into an example in a second where we do um, some transformations like rotation and stuff like that. And then in a minute, we'll combine that with two-dimensional iteration where we actually nest two for loops inside each other and see huge power where we can draw really complex shapes, for example, inside of each one of these squares. So that'll be in the next video. See you over there.